Hi. All of my videos before has been more so informational, so I thought I would change up the pace and make it a little bit more personal. Where I just talk a little bit more about myself, why I studied psychology, my own struggle with mental illness, and my overall mental health journey. I will be being all and talking about some of the most vulnerable moments in my 25 years of life. So please, please, please make sure to like the video, make sure you are subscribed if you are not already subscribed, and please don't forget to turn on that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my new uploads. With that being said, let's get personal. So I think I should start from the beginning. I mean, I think that would make the most sense. So before I went to high school, I was such a hard worker. I was involved in every single event at my primary school. I was always one of those students whose grades were the highest. I was a prefect. I was in every single extracurricular activity. I mean, I was just extra and unnecessary in primary school. Then I went to high school and I got the biggest culture shock of my entire life. I just got slapped right in the face with reality check. I was this little girl who thought way too highly of herself and I was thrust into this huge school. I felt like a small fish in a giant pond and I was no longer the best student because there were other students who were better than me, they were students that were smarter than me, the subjects became harder and more complicated, so my grades weren't what I was used to delivering. So it was just a lot of change that was introduced to me in a short period of time um, and I was also brought up very sheltered. I mean as much opportunities as my parents offered me, I was still very sheltered and very protected, so I think that also had an influence on how much of a change high school was for me. After grade 8, I started changing just drastically. My grades were not up to standard, my priorities changed, I no longer focused on my academics, and then by grade 10, I literally failed math every month. And what happened was, if you fail numeracy or maths, specifically in grade 10, Every month, your teacher has to write down your marks and make sure you've made progress. And then if you fail, your parents have to sign the form. So every month, my maths just got worse and worse and worse. And my parents witnessed how bad my maths became and they never understood why. Around this time, you know, apart from stress from my school, I was going through some personal stuff and mentally and emotionally, I was just not in a good place and it translated over to my academics. But you know, at that age, I had no idea what was going on with me. I just thought it was like hormones or puberty, so I dismissed it. Big mistake. But then by the end of grade 10, going on to grade 11, I remember, oh my gosh, my mom, when she would, you know, drive me to school and we would approach the school gate. I'd get this warm feeling inside of me and I'm not talking about that warm fuzzy feeling you get when you are like excited or nostalgic. I'm talking that warm feeling that feels like it's burning a hole in your stomach like bad acid reflux. And I'd get sweaty palms, my breathing would become heavy. And at that time, I didn't realize I was suffering from severe anxiety. These were literally all the psychophysiological symptoms of an anxiety attack. So this went on for months and it became so bad that some mornings I'd get to school and I'd go into the bathroom and I would just go behind one of the bathroom stalls and I would just cry. I mean, I would, I would bawl my eyes out. I had absolutely no idea why. And then every other day of me crying in the bathroom became literally every day. And I didn't realize that, you know, alongside having severe anxiety, I was also suffering from depression. I started losing interest in things that I used to love. I didn't care about my academics. I would always make or find excuses 
to get out of extracurricular activities, going to social events, and it became so bad that I started staying absent from school. So staying absent maybe once a month turned into me literally staying absent for two weeks out of the month. No one knew what was going on with me, no one knew what I was going through. No one knew I was suffering from severe anxiety, depression, and social anxiety. And it was so bad that it got to a point where I couldn't even leave my house. I physically couldn't get myself to speak to people. I couldn't see people. I just didn't know how to cope. Ultimately to the point where halfway through my senior year of high school, I ended up dropping out because mentally, physically, emotionally, I couldn't handle the turmoil that was going on in my head anymore. My personality changed. I went from a super confident and assertive person to being quiet and withdrawn and uninterested in anything. And I just hated myself. For the next six months of the year, I was probably at the absolute lowest point emotionally in my entire life. I would physically hurt myself, I mean I would hit myself, I would cut myself and I, I mean I still have the scars. People usually say that you know when you cut yourself you're looking for attention but that's just not the case. When you suffer from severe depression the emotional pain that you feel is so intense and all-consuming that you will literally turn to anything to distract yourself from the pain. So redirecting that mental or emotional pain into physical pain like you know cutting yourself for example. For a split second your brain is focused on the physical pain and it's almost like a relief to you. In other cases it is a cry for help because you may not know where or who to turn to for help. This is why so many people who suffer from severe depression turn to drugs or other substances or even consider suicide. This is why mental illness and more specifically depression is no joke. I mean one day I even drank the entire bottle of my mom's sleeping tablets in the hope that I wouldn't wake up the next day because the mental and emotional pain I felt was just too much and the fact that I had no idea what was going on with me made it 10 times worse. So I went to the doctor one day, she'd be my GP since I was 7. She noticed something strange about me, how I was absent from school so much, not knowing me you know, as a child that was very dedicated to my schoolwork she noticed that it was out of character. So she started asking me all these questions about, you know, my academics, my interests, my sleeping patterns. And at the time, I didn't realize that she was actually screening me. So what is screening? Screening is basically when a medical professional asks you specific questions to gauge whether you are in the criteria for certain mental illness and she told me and this was like the first time anyone has ever mentioned anything about mental illness or mental health to me i mean i did once go to my drama teacher and told her that i may be suffering from depression and even then i think i was joking more than anything and all she told me was have you considered getting help but she never sat down with me or she never took it further. I mean, if I was a teacher and a child as much as mentioned something to me about depression or any other mental illness, I would have called the parents or I would have done anything in my power to take action. But anyway, back to my GP. She said, I may be suffering from severe depression and that she wants to refer me to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. So this is when my mental health journey officially started. But I mean, I was in denial the entire time because I refused to believe that there was something wrong with me. I mean, even though there wasn't. Me having mental illness, there wasn't anything wrong with me. Having mental illness doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. But I was just the biggest skeptic when it came to mental illness. I always believed it was fake, that there's no way that people are faking when they claim they have mental illness. And I wish I didn't have to admit this, and I wish that I wasn't this uninformed and ignorant. I made fun of people who supposedly had mental illness until I got diagnosed with severe depression 
and anxiety and realized that I had been living with it for four years then it wasn't so funny anymore so this is why i am so touchy when it comes to mental health awareness especially amongst young people when they are at the most vulnerable and fragile age when there's so many changes going on with them emotionally and mentally because if i had known about mental illness and had proper education on it i would have sought out help earlier i wouldn't have dismissed my suspicion when i spoke to my drama teacher but i believe everything happens for a reason there is such a thing as divine timing everything happens how it's supposed to happen when it's supposed to happen so i don't regret anything and i wouldn't change anything so after being referred to a psychologist i was then referred to a psychiatrist and then i was institutionalized i was there for maybe two days and then i ended up leaving because i realized institutionalization wasn't for me and this is why i say you can adapt your treatment plan however you choose to and you know what's best for you because i've experienced it i've lived it i have personal experience with it and because not every treatment works for every person everyone is different everyone reacts to treatment differently i also saw other people in the institution that were worse off than me and i realized just how bad untreated mental illness can be to your overall health and it was also an eye-opener for me of what could have happened to me had i not been made aware of my mental health and how important it is and how beneficial early diagnosis is so long story short institutionalization wasn't for me it didn't work for me you know one-on-one -on -one sessions didn't work for me medication worked but only to a certain degree and I was off of it almost as quickly as I was on it. And then, you know, when all of these methods weren't working, I decided to take matters into my own hands because I refused to accept defeat. And since I always do better with self-learning, I decided to dedicate my life to learning about psychology. In my previous video, I actually explained the difference between learning about and learning or studying psychology so if you want a little bit more of an understanding on that please make sure to watch that video i will link it in the description box below so when i started learning about psychology i did it because i wanted to better understand myself i wanted to better understand what was going on with me and only once i started doing that did i start to feel like myself again i started to not hate myself so much because I finally started understanding myself and my mental health better. And to put the cherry on top of the cake, I realized I had a passion for the field of psychology. And I realized, you know what? I might want to do this for the rest of my life. And hopefully help other young people in high school who may be going through the same thing I went through, who may be feeling the same way I felt. So they can better understand themselves and see that there is nothing wrong with them, that they are not broken, that mental health can be managed and that you can live a fully functioning life without mental illness taking over your life. Because if I had someone at that age to gently guide me through what I was feeling, I would have been able to handle things differently. Also, I had a newfound appreciation, compassion and empathy for the people that I saw in the institution. And I realized I could see myself helping, guiding and caring for people in need of psychological help. So after six months of trying to get on the road of recovery, I finally started having a sense of purpose again. And I realized that I didn't want to be a, you know, high school dropout. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that I wanted to complete my studies. And I ended up enrolling in a different high school where I was finally able to complete my final year of studies. And soon after that, I enrolled in public university, which was a big mistake since I still suffered from severe social anxiety. Inevitably ended up dropping out of public university and immediately enrolled in a distance learning online university where I was finally able to actively learn and study psychology. And three years later, 
I can proudly say that I graduated with a degree in psychology and I specialize in psychological counseling and I've never been more happy and fulfilled in my entire life. I never realized how much I could actually love and enjoy what I'm studying and doing. And at the moment as we speak, I'm in the process of completing my honors in psychology. So hopefully by the end of this year, I will have my honors in psychology too. So this is something that I haven't really shared with many people. Not a lot of people know this about me. Not a lot of people know what I went through. Especially, you know, my peers and my friends from high school. All they know is that I left school, but they never really knew the reason behind it. I'm pretty sure some people thought maybe I was pregnant or that I simply moved overseas. In some cases, I'm pretty sure some people thought I died. But no, I am very much alive and well and doing so much better and so happy and content. And that's always most important. My mental health is flourishing and I can finally talk about my personal experience, be a beacon for other people out there. So yes, studying psychology definitely helped me better understand myself and my mental health in lots of ways, you know, apart from obviously God's favor and the support from my mom and my brother. Studying and learning psychology saved my life made me a lot more lenient with myself, taught me not to be so hard on myself, that I am human and I'm allowed to have moments of weakness and I shouldn't feel shame or I shouldn't feel disappointed in myself, that it doesn't define who I am as a person. All that matters is what I've chosen to do to pick myself up and be better than I was before. You know, as Cassie said, just take it one day at a time. I cannot stress enough that there is nothing wrong with you if you live with mental illness. You are not weak if you have had an emotional or mental breakdown. You are not broken. And if people tell you that you are, broken is beautiful. Living with mental illness just adds another interesting layer to you, just more to appreciate. And if people can't accept you for who you are, just remember there is at least one person out there that will accept you love you and appreciate you so i hope you enjoyed the video and if you are watching this and are part of the crowd that wondered what happened to me why it disappeared off the face of the earth i hope i finally shone some light on it and i really hope that if you are watching this and you are the age that i was and i had my emotional breakdown that you can use this as an example and learn from it to better look after yourself, your mental health, and seek out help if necessary. I hope you have a nice day further. I hope you stay happy, healthy, and safe. Always remember to give love, find value, and see beauty in everything that you do. I'll see you in the next video. Much love. Bye.